For decades, we've been hearing about the female athlete triad and on occasion, the male athlete triad. Those are basically the same thing, but one's in a woman, one's in a man, and in men, we don't have menstrual dysfunction. But regardless, those terms, both of them, are suggested for retirement by the International Olympic Committee, or the IOC. Um, in place of the athlete triad terminology, it is now recommended that we use the term relative energy deficiency in sport, or RED-S. This is too little caloric intake for the level of physical activity that the athlete or the individual is doing. Okay, um, So the reason for switching away from the athlete triad terminology to the red S terminology is it acknowledges some important things that weren't originally understood or at least not well recognized. So one is that it affects men too. So again, typically we heard about the female athlete triad, but not so much the male athlete triad. Two, it recognizes the root cause, which is the energy deficit itself. And three, it recognizes there are lots of physiological consequences to this, not just the typical ones of menstrual dysfunction and bone uh, health decrements. So yes, those things can happen, but decreased immunity, decreased protein synthesis, so uh, worse uh, muscle building and maintenance, um, decreased metabolic rates, decreased cardiovascular function, decreased psychological health, and decreased exercise performance and recovery. So all these things then affect your ability to perform both in your practice schedule as well as your performance schedule for your athletics. Um, or if you're just someone who exercises a lot, it affects your ability to maintain that same level of exercise. Um, and obviously it's bad for your health. All, a lot of these other things are uh, health consequences. So. What exactly is going on here? If you look at this graph over here, we have the first condition where the needs are met. All right, so this is someone who is not experiencing red S. So the caloric intake, this red bar, is equal to the energy required for physical activity and the energy required for resting physiology added together. So these two added together equals the caloric intake. So you're eating enough calories for your physical activity and resting energy needs. In these other two scenarios, both of these are situations where the person would likely be experiencing red S. And so both of them, you're going to notice that the uh, energy for rest and the energy for physical activity added together is going to be greater than the caloric intake. Uh, but that can happen in two different ways. The first one is if you maintain your caloric intake. So let's say you were this person and you started increasing your physical activity or you started physical activity and you didn't increase your caloric intake. So now your physical activity needs are greater, pushing up your total energy needs. But if you haven't met that with caloric intake, then you're going to eventually experience red S. Um, if you uh, do it through dieting, so that's this other situation here. So let's say you've maintained your physical activity and resting energy needs as you were before, um, but you have reduced your caloric intake um, usually this is done for uh, weight loss purposes, and in some people it makes sense, but we're, we're talking about athletes specifically here, or people who are already probably pretty lean. So if you reduce your caloric intake, um, now you are not meeting your energy uh, needs, and you are in a deficiency, you're in a deficit. So that is essentially what, again, relative energy deficit in sport means or deficiency in sports mean. Both of these conditions would be uh, conditions right for red S where you can start having some or all of these symptoms over here. Um, and there's a, additional symptoms not listed here. This is a very short list. Um, so regardless of how you got red S or the athlete you're working with or someone you're working with, your client, um, it's something that you need to correct and you need to get the energy balance uh, back in check. So you either need to increase the caloric intake or decrease the physical activity or a little bit of both in order to get them back in some form of balance.